Welcome to 10.3, apply properties of chords. Remember that does have an H there, but we pronounce it as if it is a chord that you use to charge your cell phone. And what is a chord? You will remember that a chord goes from circle to circle. So this blue here is an example of a chord. And our objective is how can I, or our central question, how do I use relationships of arcs? Remember, arc is a part of a circle. So I want to use the relationships of arcs and chords in a circle. So, as we said, an arc is a part of a circle. When it is half of a circle, we call that a semicircle. And we can determine that by it being the diameter. Remember, a diameter is a chord, goes from circle to circle, but this particular chord happens to go through the center. So that's a diameter. And when we have a diameter, that cuts up half of the circle. So this arc is called a semicircle. And the measure, remember the measure of the central angle is the measure of the arc and your central angle here it would be a straight angle or a linear angle and that is 180 degrees therefore the arc which is called a semicircle is also 180 degrees you'll remember that a minor arc is less than 180 degrees so we here's your central angle and that angle is less than 180 degrees therefore it is a the arc that it creates is a minor arc and a major arc is greater than 180 degrees. So let's look into these, this relationship between arcs and chords. And our first theorem here is that if we have two arcs that are congruent, these two red arcs are congruent, we are told, or actually the opposite is true, <laughs> uh, that the arcs can only be congruent if and only if the chords that are creating those arcs are congruent. In other words, if we are told that these two chords are congruent, then we know for sure that the related arcs are also congruent. That's a contrapositive statement when you hear it say, if and only if. The converse of that statement is also true. First, we said that if the chords are congruent, then the respective arcs will also be congruent. The converse is also true that if the arcs are congruent, then the uh, respective chords will also be congruent. So here's an example of how to use that principle. Here we are given two chords, and we're told that the length of both of these, or each of these, is nine, so therefore what does that tell us about the measure, the italics M here means the measure of arc B. Well, these the measure of these two arcs is going to be congruent, and so if we are told that the measure of arc AB, the measure of arc AB here is 110 degrees, meaning that if we had a central angle uh, here, this central angle would be 110 degrees. And if this arc is 110 degrees, then find the measure of arc BC. Well, like we said, these chords are congruent, therefore the arcs will also be congruent. And here they're saying if the measure of arc AC, so now they're looking up over here, if the measure of this arc is 150 degrees, then we are told, so this is a separate problem, so ignore uh, what they told us before, that the measure of arc AB is 110. This is a totally different situation. Now if uh, the measure of arc AC was 150 degrees, then what would be the measure of arc AB? So you cannot just go, hey, it was 110. No, you need to say, wait a second, because I do know that these two chords are congruent, therefore I know that these two arcs will also be congruent. 
And so if I have the remaining part here is 150, subtract that from 360, divide that by two, and that will give me what the measure of one of these arcs is. So go ahead and do that for this one. Now I've drawn a big old black line here to separate so you understand this is a separate uh, theorem. And let me emphasize again, hey, don't continue with me. Make sure you have answers, you've thought about this. Don't just throw down answers. Uh, pause the video and think about those things. Don't just copy down what I've written here. I want you to think what's going on inside your brain is what's most important, not what you're copying down on the paper. So here's a separate theorem bisecting arcs and all that they are telling us is that if these two arcs here are congruent to each other if these two arcs are congruent to each other then this point you could consider it as the midpoint of this arc we don't we do not use that terminology though but we do say that this segment cy is bisecting this arc bisecting the arc. So just like we've used the term bisecting a segment or bisecting an angle, so also we can use the concept of bisecting an arc. That's really all that we're saying here. Now here are two theorems. It's really just one theorem and then the converse of that theorem. Remember converse means to switch. So we're talking about a conditional statement here. See the if and the then, so this is a conditional statement. The Remember, it's if hypothesis, then conclusion. So they're saying if one chord is a perpendicular bisector of the other chord. So here is, let's see, yeah, here is the chord that is a perpendicular bisector of this chord TR. So, I guess I put colors in this maybe, but um, perpendicular, of course, means it intersects at 90 degrees. Bisector means that this chord here is cutting in two the other chord. So, this is the midpoint of this chord. And you can sell that because these two segments are congruent to each other. So, if this SQ chord is a perpendicular bisector of chord TR, then chord SQ is a diameter. Well, that's interesting. So all that I need to know is that SQ is a perpendicular bisector of TR. Then I know for sure that SQ is a diameter. In other words, it is a chord that goes through the center. The converse of that is also true. What does converse mean? It means uh, switch. So let's switch the, remember it says if hypothesis, then conclusion. Now let's switch it and put the hypothesis and, conclu and conclusion, uh, switch them around. Now let me clarify, this statement underneath here is the same thing, it's saying the same thing, except with specific terminology uh, in a specific situation. So it's saying if segment QS, is a perpendicular bisector of segment TR, then segment QS is a diameter of the circle. So it's taking this theorem and applying it to a specific situation. But here's the converse of that theorem. If a diameter, so now we're told that segment EQ is a EG is a diameter, and also it's perpendicular to this chord FD then we know for sure that the diameter is bisecting this uh, segment FD. Okay, see how that works? So the converse. So first we said that if this is a perpendicular bisector of the other chord, then this is a diameter. Now we're saying if it's a diameter and is perpendicular, then it bisects this chord. Let's put that to use. And the first principle, first theorem here, is uh, being used in this problem. And what are we told here? We are told that here we have two arcs that are congruent. And we also know that this segment here is three. The other segment is five. 
and they are asking for km. Remember when you just have km, it means the length of segment km. So what is the length of segment km? Well, um, I'm not sure. I do know the, the length of segment LJ, and I do know that the related arc for uh, segment uh, LJ is this here, this arc here, and I do know this part of the arc is congruent to this other part, and this part of the arc for LJ is the same as the part of the arc for KM. So in other words, this arc created by KM is congruent to this arc created by LJ. And if the two arcs are congruent, that tells us that the two segments or the two chords are going to be congruent. And if uh, segment LJ is 5 plus 3, which is 8, then I think you should know <laughs> what the length of segment KM is. So I'll let you write that in. I'm going to hold your hand right up to the end, but I want you to make sure to think that through and you understand what it is that you're saying there. Here they're asking for the measure of segment, or not, this, not a segment, that's an arc, right? The measure of arc AB. So here is arc AB. And what are we told? We're told these two chords are congruent. We do know that this arc is 100. If these two arcs are congruent, then we know that, no, I didn't say arc, I did say arcs, didn't I? If these two chords are congruent, then we know that their respective arcs will also be congruent. So we do know that these two arcs are congruent, and we do know that the sum of all three of these arcs is 360. So my recommendation to you is take 360 and then take away 100 degrees and you're left with what? 260? And then take that 260 and divide it by 2 because we know that uh, this is like a bisector, isn't it? Of this larger major arc uh, here. And so cut that thing in two, and you will have the measure of one of these arcs here. Here's another uh, problem for us. We are told, we're asked uh, what BD is, what is the length of BD, and all that we're told. This point here is telling us that this is the center of the circle. So here is a chord that goes through the center. So this chord is a diameter. And also that diameter is perpendicular to this chord. Huh. So therefore, th remember we said here that, uh, here it is, if uh, you have a diameter that is perpendicular to a chord, then what does that diameter do to the chord? It bisects, it bisects it. So this diameter is bisecting chord BD. And if this top part is five, I'll let you determine what this other part is here and then what the sum of them is for the length of segment BD. For this one they are telling us what? They're telling us this is a diameter because it goes through the center and it's also uh, perpendicular to this chord and we want they want us to find the measure of arc JK and so remember, if it is a diameter and bisecting a chord, then it is, no, no, and perpendicular to the chord, then we know it's going to be bisecting that chord. And therefore, these two segments are going to be congruent, and therefore, these two arcs are going to be congruent. They're asking here for the measure of arc MN. MN, here's an arc. And I do know this is the diameter. I do know it's perpendicular to this chord. So therefore, these two segments, or these two arcs, the segments are gonna be congruent. And therefore, these two arcs will also be congruent. And so you know what this arc is. And then take these two and subtract that from 360 to get the, the entire, this major arc, 
and then divide that by 2 to get this minor arc of Mn. Okay, hopefully my, my kind of walking you through this will help you. And you try something on your sheet of paper and think it through, show me your calculations, and demonstrate that you are, are thinking that through. Here in the back side, some more uh, problems that uh, for you to think through. Find the measure of the indicated arc in the diagram. So I want to find the measure of arc CD. I do have a diameter because it's going through the center and it's also perpendicular to this arc. So therefore these two segments are going to be congruent and also these two arcs are going to be congruent. So if you want to find the measure of arc CD, then you take whatever that is, which is 9x, and set that equal to 80 minus x. So there's your equation, 9x equals 80 minus x in order to be able to solve for x. And once you solve for x, then plug it in to this uh, uh, expression to be able to find the yeah, the measure, here's the measure of arc CD. And then once you've done that, then you can also plug x into uh, this expression to find the measure of arc DE, and then compare those two, and ask yourself, hey, why? Uh,